Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to Dine and Dreams. It is your lady, Missy, aka the River Priestess. Thank you so much for tuning in to another video. If you would, please make sure that you like and subscribe and comment down below which one you chose. So I know it's been a minute, guys. I have just celebrated my birthday this past October the 13th. Shout out to everyone that um, sent me a happy birthday. Um, I haven't responded to everybody, <laughs> but I have responded to a lot of people. But this is just a big announcement to say thank you. I really appreciate you taking time out your day to send me well wishes. Um, and I am back. Well, I, I don't feel like I really took that much of a break, but I am back working. So you can book. Um, I think I have all services available right now. And we're actually going to be focusing on heritage in this reading. So I really encourage you to invest in a heritage reading. Um, if you haven't, it is a very impactful reading. It reveals a lot of information about who you are. And it'll help you to um, channel your energy into figuring out like more about yourself, okay? Um, I always encourage people to invest in their self and your heritage is the way to do it and, you know, like one of those starting points. But before we get into this reading, just a few announcements. Again, if you want to book a reading, dawnanddreams.com. That link will be in the description box. We also have, um, I'm going to have a few things up, you know, all throughout the week. So just continue to check back. But we have ox bones, um, Ox bone bracelets available, and these are stackable. They're very, very good to keep your head clear, especially if you have like depressing thoughts. You have a lot of, and normally, you know, this is just spiritual. I can't give no, you know, uh, medical advice, but spiritually, you will have things that target you, um, and it will come in the form of depressing thoughts and get, get your mind to think negatively of yourself and the things that you're doing. So this protects against that. It, take, it protects against negative spirits that target your, um, your space, basically your auric field. Auric field, whatever you want to call it. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this reading. Um, I'm really happy to do this reading. This is going to be spiritual gifts passed down from your heritage or through your heritage, through the generational line. I do have another heritage reading up if you want to check that out. Um, it may feed off of that reading. I'm actually using the deck that I created for my heritage reading. So you will see this deck if you book a heritage reading with me. But yeah, so we're going to figure out what gifts came from your ancestry. Okay, we're specifically focusing on that. So you can pick pile one, pile two, or pile three, and I'm using the feathers. It's just a vocal point so that you can choose because all of them are the same. I may draw some more cards, but yes, they're already pre-shuffled out. So you have pile one, this feather, pile two with this feather, and pile three with this feather. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into these piles. If you need more time, uh, please pause the video. Um, I have the outside open. I don't know if you can hear the birds, but I love when they are singing. It is medicine, so hopefully you can hear them outside. But let's go ahead and jump into these pals. All right, pal one. And the crow was just speaking a minute ago. I don't know if they're going to speak again. Um, all right, so now when I say gifts, I don't just mean spiritual gifts, but I'm also I'm trying to target it towards spiritual gifts. So more things may come up in your reading. So let's go ahead and figure out what spiritual gifts or gifts that were passed down through your lineage, lineage and heritage, starting out with this feather. Um, this tells me that your family, um, just overall, like your lineage, um, rather it's on your mother's side or your father's side, you know, whichever resonates is very fearless. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that crow because <laughs> they're agreeing. Um, like you may go through a lot of challenges because that's the way that your family line is kind of set up. They're set up to face many challenges and become stronger. So it's, a, it's like a warrior type spirit. Okay. All right. So let's see what gifts were passed down through your heritage. And we need to clarify. We'll see. Ah, <laughs> this is the reason. Now I'm, I'm looking at this the same time you guys are looking at it. I just picked the cards out. Um, and put them together, but I haven't seen all of the cards. Now, you have um, royalty, chief, king, queen, and you have root workers, medicine man, medicine woman. So this is why the crow speaks as well, too. The crow represents spirituality, you know, um, on a general level, okay? On a general level, we know that the crow is associated with people who are spiritual. Now, anyway, you have root workers and medicine man. So this means that your ancestors, I'm actually seeing something to where ancestors are out like in the bush, 
Um, they know how to pick the herbs. They know how to make medicine um, in many different ways with one herb. So basically, uh, let's say, I don't even know a herb off the top of my head, but let's just say any herb or um, I don't know if it's pokeweed that I, I was picking the other day, um, not the other day, but like a month or two ago or something like, I think it was pokeweed or something like that. But anyway, uh, basically it can be used for food and it can also be used spiritually towards enemies or to help with things. So your ancestors kind of knew how to make medicine in many different ways. They would use it physically to help you, but they could also use it spiritually. And that is the magic of the root worker. You know, they know how to take care of things, um, not just on a spiritual level, but on a physical physical level as well. And they also, you know, whatever term fits, medicine man, medicine woman, root workers. Now, on the other hand, you have royalty, chief, king, queen. So with this is going back to what I said about your ancestors being very fearless. Um, it's because they have positions to rule. Okay. Whoever is a king, whoever is a queen, they can't be all nice. And that's one thing we forget, you know, to be a queen, you have to, you know, reign divine authority. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to, you know, uh, be very ruthless, but in a sense, you somewhat have to be because people have to learn to respect you. So you did a lot of things, or I'm sorry, your ancestors did a lot of things to earn respect through the things that they were able to do. They had to be fearless. They had to go up against people. And so this is, you know, this more so deals with spiritual gifts, but this also deals with like, you know, who they were overall as a people. Mm. Mm. yeah because i see chief chief and so okay so this is what this is telling me all right this is interesting okay so um the chief of the tribe normally um it just depends on you know what indigenous tribe we're talking about but i'm going to speak generally so normally the chief of the tribe has a lot of spiritual wisdom just as well as they have physical wisdom. So it was both for your family, okay? They not only had the, the physical strength, but they also had the spiritual strength. But I'm seeing with this, you know, a lot of them, you know, they could also have been called priest or priestess, priest or priestess, excuse me, back in the day. They also could have been referred to as that because I'm seeing it was their spiritual strength, it was their predictions that also put them in the positions that they were in, okay? And normally, you know, because people had gifts out of the ordinary, they would be um, uh, singled out, should I say? I don't know what word I'm looking for, like singled out or something like that, um, and focused on. You know, they would be the priest or the priestess who could predict things for the land. So some of your ancestors had those type of positions or, you know, in a more modern day sense, they used to live, you know, maybe in some cabin far off and people would come and see them for their predictions and also their medicine that they could provide for them, okay? Because I'm seeing um, with this instinct volcanoes, uh, it means that they can predict big events that were going to come. Mm. So your ancestors were very gifted with prediction. So this is something that you're also gifted with. And everything I talk about with them is something that applies to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't even see that. Oh, wow. So it says birds. So when we started this reading, I mentioned how the crow was speaking in this reading. Uh, making its presence known. So your ancestors may very well have had connections to birds. Um, they might have transformed into birds. And many people think that this is like in a literal sense. Um, <laughs> and maybe at a certain point in time, maybe it was like that. But, you know, sometimes it's more so in a spiritual sense. How can I explain that? Ugh. It's kind of similar to technology, how we can talk through phones and we can, you know, connect to somebody across the world or something like that. Like they would use the birds um, as vessels to connect with spirits, to pass on messages and things like that. So their voice could be heard in many different places because of the access with the, um, the animal kingdom. I hope I'm making sense. Like basically they could talk to um, a bird here and, you know, the, the bird could physically travel to another land and, and spread a message or, um, hmm. 
But I'm saying this more so like telepathy or something like that. But I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to lose you guys trying to explain what I'm talking about. But basically they had a connection to these animal spirits, specifically birds. They knew how to access birds in a spiritual way to get answers from the spirit realm. And they also knew how to pass on messages, whether it was physical or in a spiritual sense. Um, it's kind of like, and if I had to just compare it just to anything else, I would say like the trees. Like how the trees work in a network. So one tree can connect to uh, many other trees in the area. You know, something like that. So they have some type of connection with that. This is also how they would get answers about what's coming um, through the connection through the birds. And they're referencing you as the child. Okay, so these gifts have been directly passed down to you, whether you have accessed them or not. It is the gift of royalty. It is the gift of inheritance. Um, it is a gift of leadership. Uh, it is a gift of being um, a major part of a community, whether you feel that way or not, you know. Um, and when I say when I say that, I mean, maybe you don't feel that way now, but maybe later down the line, you're going to understand what your impact on the community is going to do. OK, and if you're already in this position, then you're falling in line with what your ancestors were doing, OK, because they were leaders. They were um, able to lead people. And like I said, it's not necessarily about being ruthless. It's about being fearless. It's about going against the grain, doing what it needs to be done. You know, even if not everybody wants to do it, um, that's the gift of power, <laughs> a gift of power, a gift of rule, a gift of, you know, being dominant in areas that you need to be. And yes, that can be a gift, especially in a society where everybody has anxiety and we all kind of do, but essentially has so much anxiety that they can't make a decision, that they can't do what needs to be done. So you have that gift of power, that gift of strength to be able to rule and help people regardless of what's going on. All right. And you also have the gift of medicine um, and your medicine. Again, you can turn something um <laughs> So, what is it called? Turn nothing into something, uh, make something out of nothing. Like you have that type of gift. You know, you know that anything in nature can be used as medicine, including the birds and the animals around you. But again, there's a connection to birds here. And like I said, I hope I guys, I didn't lose you guys with trying to explain, but I was saying more than one thing. I was saying it like telepathy, like one bird can communicate something to like another country, but I don't want to lose you guys with that conversation. So let's just say again, they had some type of operation with the birds where they would get messages and send messages as well too. I also see some altar work here, but this gives me a lot of root work type of energy. They knew how to go to the cemeteries. And this is some of your, maybe your more recent ancestors and what they used to do. Um, but there's a, a strong connection to the other side, to the deceased, okay? Um, they always paid homage to their ancestors. And this goes way back. This is not a new thing. We do it in a, a more modern way now with our little altars and our pictures. But they have been doing this since the beginning of time. You know, even I learned the elephants have, you know, their own little cemetery where they pay reverence to uh, those who pass on the other elephants. And they even go back to those grave sites. This is what animals do. OK. And so when we say we're weird for doing it, it's like, no, the, the animal kingdom is already doing these things. So anyway, but yes, your ancestors paid a lot of reverence to the deceased. And this is something that they want you to carry on doing as well, too. You're supposed to have that connection to the other side. This will also strengthen your gifts. Your ancestors had a lot of clarity about what was going on in the world. I'm also seeing uh, predictions with weather as well, too. So if you have a good prediction when it comes to weather, that comes in, too. Now, I'm going to pull a few more cards, and that's going to be pretty much it. Hmm. I'm seeing that this gift um, that's coming through your family, I don't, you know, I don't want to say, how do I say that? Directly what I'm hearing is, look at some birds flying by. Um, it's been passed on to almost every family member in some way, shape, or form. At least the gift. I don't know if the leadership has been passed on to everybody because that sometimes doesn't come through everyone, depending on you know how they treat things, how they act. It may not be passed on to everyone in that way, but the gift of medicine, 
um, like working with herbs and all those type of things. It seems like that's been passed on or even the gift of visions, like knowing when things are going to happen has been passed on to almost every family member in some to some extent, okay? Whether they pay attention to it or not. This gift is very, very heavy, okay? And it will also be passed on to your children if you decide to have any or if you have some. They will have the gift of knowing too, like that inner knowing, um, a strong intuition. Mm. Spirit says that you should invest in more wisdom about your ancestors. Because they have more things that they want to reveal to you. Yes, this will help you to advance in your um, in your spiritual wisdom. Yeah. For some of you, it's time for um, rites of passage. It's time for initiation. Okay? They want to give you more wisdom about who you are and more understanding. Mm. Okay, so this is also what I'm hearing, okay? This is for some of you. You have found some information about some people. Um, it could be a set of people. It could be a tribe. Or you could have, like, some association with some type of king or queen. Um, as of recently, you may have come across a king or queen, some type of story. You actually have ancestry with that tribe or that person that you looked up, but you're not going to be able to probably... Um, connect the dots. I don't know if you'll be able to sooner or later, but they're telling me that because with the stone people and records revealed, it's like they've been showing you who is in your ancestry, whether this person is famous or not. Doesn't matter if it was a famous king or queen that passed away a long, long ago. Like you're not coming across this information for no reason. It's like it's coming to you, but because you can't prove it, you're denying it. So spirit says keep an open mind, okay? Because not everything you're going to have a direct link to, you know? Um, some things they just have to, you're just going to come across and you're going to resonate with it. So just pay attention to it. What did I say, warriors? Yeah, I told you, your, your ancestors, they were... That's probably, you know, normally people of the bush are medicine men too because they know the bush. They hunt, you know, they gather. They know the bush like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Spirit says, watch who you teach um, your information to. Some things are only for the root worker and the medicine man and the medicine woman, okay? Some things are only for the royalty, for the chief, king, and queen. And that is not to put anybody down. We're not even bringing anybody else up in this conversation. We're just saying that you need to keep some information to yourself. Because, you know, of course, gifts can't be stolen. But at the same time, you know, certain records and things are only for you, so spirit is telling you to keep that in mind. Keep certain information to yourself. Keep certain recipes to yourself. Don't always be so willing to just hand out all of your gifts and things that make you special, okay? Because not everybody can handle what is being revealed. They speak about you having a gift of picking up on people's pain and energy. Um, and they were also gifted with this. So when people would come near them and come in the room, they could feel, you know, their problems even before they were told about their problems. And this is, you know, like I said, a part of them being a priest or a priestess or a chief. Like they just knew what was going on with the person um, in order to give them medicine. So a strong gift of inner knowing, strong gift of feeling. So that is a part of that. All right, guys, so that's power one. Let me go on to power two. All right, so power two, here we are. I spent a long time on power one, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's see what gifts were passed down, uh, spiritual gifts that were passed down through the heritage. Okay, so starting out with you picking the griffin vulture. All right, so this tells me that your ancestors, um, a lot of them had a close connection to what many people call God, the supreme being, the creator, the divine, the most high, okay? Um, they spent a lot of their time, you know, connecting to or trying to connect to the primordial source energy, okay? Um, and, it, and succeeding, okay? So their goal was more so to... Um, well, I'm not going to say all of your ancestors' goals was that, but that's primarily on a spiritual level. That's what it was. Like there was no this or that or putting something, you know, uh, above that. 
how do I how do I communicate that? Like, yes, there might have been, you know, veneration to ancestors and things like that, but I see that there wasn't a lot of in-betweens, meaning there wasn't like um how do I say this? Huh. Like basically there's a, a strong connection to everything in itself. Like you know that everything is a part of this divine primordial energy. And I don't see a lot of, let me give the example. That's the best thing I can do. Um, there wasn't a lot of faith in, in man more than there was in spirit. Okay. Um, I don't see your ancestors like, you know, bowing down to humans and things like that. You know, now we have the Bible, we have all these other things, right? And I see that your ancestors were more so just connected, you know, without written word, you know, not to say they didn't write anything down, but just on a spiritual level, it feels like they have more so a connection to that wholeness and everything and in everyone and in the water in the earth and the sun like it was all a part of this divine primordial source energy so let's see if we can get deeper into that okay because i don't want to confuse you all right let me see so we have farmers hunters and gathers that makes sense creators innovators and venture i also want to mention that these gifts may not all deal with just spiritual gifts but that's what i'm trying to focus on mm. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay, so that's not just a feeling. Like, I'm looking at these cards the same time you guys are. Okay, that's not just a feeling. All right, it's on point. All right, so, okay. So, take what, I don't like saying take what resonates because it's like, you're going to know if it resonates. But anyway, you know, I'm going to say that because I know that there's going to be some specifics here. All right, are cer certain people that are going to hit with this and may not hit with that. So just ride the wave as it fits. Um, it says, you know, is it saying he has risen? He is risen, okay. He is risen, you know, of course this is, well, it looks like to me a church. Yeah, it is, a Baptist church. All right, church, and then we got the waters, wade in the water, and we got the ship. Mmm. So a lot of people in your family, you know, even as of recently, you may have a lot of Christians. I don't know if they're Catholics, just a very, a lot of religious people, because again, that, that need to connect to the creator is very, very strong. So let me, let me go rewind back. So for some of your recent ancestors, of course, there might, they might've used the Bible. They might've used different things to, to connect to source, but the main priority is source. Okay. Um, I'm seeing a lot of dedication to the creator in itself, like just the creator getting closer to that, you know? Um, so maybe even nuns, if you have that in your family, but just, it could be deacons, pastors, um, you know, mothers of the church. You might have a lot of, you know, just a lot of religious people in your family, but I see the primary goal is to connect to the creator. So I hope I'm expressing that right, because for some reason, it, it's hard to communicate what I'm saying, but it's like there's not a lot of distractions. Like your family didn't give a lot of energy to, you know, the mundane world. Like they didn't give a lot of energy to things that just didn't matter. So I could compare this to more so like a monk, you know, like how they care for, and I don't, I don't know everything about monks, just, you know, ride the wave uh for this example but monks you know they I, from what i know they pay attention to every life everything in existence you know um they're not getting mad at everything they're not on social media you know going back and forth with people getting caught up in this mundane world they know the purpose of life you know in a sense right uh, or they're focused on their mission they don't let a lot of things target their energy like that they keep a common goal. So if I had to compare this word, I might just say holy. Like your, your family was very holy. I don't know. Like it's just, I, I just see very spiritual people that just don't get distracted with human things. Like not giving into, not, uh, I don't want to say that because some of your family members probably did give into drugs and all those other type of things. But I just see there's a straight line within the heritage when it comes to spirituality that you know the main goal is to be connected to that wholeness, to that source. So there's a lot of that, but that's a great thing. Um, 
Hmm. Okay, so the spiritual gifts in this pile. How do I how do I express that? Because you have the waters, like it's giving me very religious, but it's like it doesn't have to be that. It's just like your ancestors kind of stayed on a straight path. Like, you know, they were so holy in certain senses that if they did pray for somebody, that person would be healed. Okay. Um, and like I said, this gives me more so recent ancestors than it does like more of the ancient ancestors. But, you know, either way, this is something that's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. Like you have those, those healing hands. Um, like if you pray for somebody, you know, they're going to be healed or spirit is going to hear you because you keep, you know, your spirituality in check. You're always dedicating time to talk to, um, the, the great creator, the great mystery, the great spirit. You make time for that. Like this pal, you know, you may find yourself, um, wanting to fast a lot, wanting to fast from anything that you're doing, or you may not even go out a lot. And it's because of your ancestral influence to kind of stay on that straight, narrow, holy path. Now there's pros and cons to that because a lot of times when you get caught up in just trying to be, you know, so holy, you know, you don't have fun and you don't enjoy this lifetime. Ah, Shay. The crows are speaking in the background, but you have a lot of spiritual support with that. I'm seeing that you have a lot of spiritual support. You still are meant to live your life, but you know, contrary to that, you're still going to have that obstacle of always wanting to kind of be clean. Um, and kind of just, and because you're so clean and so pure, it's, it's like a version. You're so clean, so pure. You have this energy to where you can bless people a lot of the times, you know, your energy is not tainted through like, you know, social media fights, arguing, this is a power that you may not get into a lot of fights. Or if you were in the past, you know, once you got on your spiritual path, you may be like, ah, eh, it's not worth my time or my energy. So this is a power that again, it's kind of like a straight and narrow path. And this is something that your ancestors went down because because again, they wanted to kind of feel connected to the creator. And that was a strong energy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also seeing that there's a lot of cleanse. Like you would be a good person to cleanse others. Okay. You'd be, as long as you, you know, uh, stay within your own purity, purifying yourself, take care of yourself and things like that. Because we have to be spiritually sound ourselves to help others. You could do that, you know, um, you could lead other people spiritually as well, too, because like I said, I'm seeing some either pastors, deacons or something in your family that's very, very strong or just people who went to the church religiously. Um, a part of your spiritual gift. And, and like I said, I'm just be keep an open mind as to how I'm saying it. OK, because it doesn't have to be seeing things at the corner of your eye. Sometimes spiritual gifts is just the fact that you're doing it more than others and you're able to do things. But one of the spiritual gifts, that's a physical one. It's the one that where you can bless things and you can bless people. You can, you, you can make something holy. You can make something sacred for somebody. Like if there was water, you could purify it and give it to someone and it will, you know, purify them. Um, like I just see that type of thing going on here. I see that you can pray for people and your prayers will be heard. Uh, because again, you keep that straight and narrow path. There's a lot of initiations in your family too. Hmm. So what this means is again, with the fasting thing, I'm not really playing about that. Like there might even be some foods that you just naturally don't want to eat anymore. Um, <laughs> and this goes back to, I need to touch on this. You have farmers, hunters, gatherers, your ancestors were really, you know, out in the fields picking things themselves, okay? So um, this could also change your appetite with certain foods. Uh, some of you could want to be vegan or you just, excuse me, or you could just want to have food that is um, homegrown and animals that haven't been, you know, beat up and things like that. You want animals that have been fed well and that have lived a good life. Um, to receive good energy, things like that. Like you're just very connected to that type of thing. Mm. Let me have to shut this door. <sighs> okay, so I shut the door so that should be a little better. Now, <laughs> this is interesting, okay? 
So I'm also seeing that your ancestors had went through a lot, okay? Um, especially some of your recent ancestors. So if you had, and this is not everybody, and it could be because, you know, slavery has been through many different types of people. But I do see something to where your ancestors may have went through that experience of being enslaved or had some, have dealt with some type of slavery, depending on, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's through a lot of different races, actually. But, you know, it seems like your ancestors kind of used their religion and, and that community, um, that belief and that faith, it really got them through a lot of things. And I'm hearing that for some of your ancestors, this changed their life, you know, when they weren't on that straight and narrow path. It seems like they became religious and it helped them to straighten up. And so they dedicated their whole life to religion and things like that, whether you would agree with that or not. Okay. And it's not about you becoming them. It just, like I said, these gifts and the things that your ancestors did is passed down. So again, you could get to a point where you don't want to, you know, do the things that you used to do, um, that were seen in negative light or things like that. You might want to change your life. And, and I'm saying this, you know, with a grain of salt, because again, there's positives and, and negatives to everything. So it doesn't mean just give up your whole life to where you're not doing anything. You should still enjoy your life. You should still have fun. But again, I'm seeing that just quite naturally, you're just going to be a person that's just dedicated, dedicated to the all, to the creator, to the known. And it's just like, you're just going to be a holy person. I just don't know another way to say that. I'm trying, but I don't know another way to say that. Anyway, um, another thing your ancestors was gifted at was they were creators, inventors, and innovators. And this makes sense because again, it seems like, you know, um, with them being farmers, hunters, and gatherers, they probably made a lot of things themselves. Um, so they created a lot of things that we have today. Okay. So they were gifted in creation as well, too. Probably gifted at music as well. Now we're going to pull a few more cards and we're going to end this one and go to number three. Yeah, see, it's, it's so strong with this pile. It's so strong. Feel spirit, meditation. Like, it, <laughs> it's like you just have to take time away from people, away from everything. Like, you would be the person that would go up into the mountains to just connect and just feel spirit all around you. Like, you may not even want to be around people like that. And it's because of that strong connection to the creator. And there's just people like that that just don't, you know, get involved in too many everyday things, uh, but you still have to be balanced to bring yourself back down to earth so you can still live your life. But your people were so dedicated to the creator that they were gifted that holy energy to be able to bless people. Okay. All right. So let's see what else we're saying. Mm. Your, your family, like I said, with the cleansing, your family was very, very gifted at cleansing people. They could sense unwanted energy. You know, you would be good at blessing people's homes with, you know, sage or smudging or something like that with herbs. You could also light up a candle for people and that would work. Okay. Uh, they were very gifted at that. You know, they could get messages to the other round very quickly and get a response very quickly. Cause again, they were just so connected and they kept their life, uh, very, very pure. Um, and many blessings too, again, with the blessing, like I said, you could bless people that tells me that too. If people need money and stuff like that, you know how to cleanse people of their dark energy and purify them so they can be back in alignment with the animals, back in alignment with the creatures of the earth. If they are, and you can offend animals too. You can offend, you know, certain kingdoms of the animal kingdom, you know, and you would, or excuse me, you or your ancestors. They were the type of people that could put them back into alignment with the creator and with that animal kingdom or whatever was out of balance and, you know, make them whole again. So it's, it's even more powerful than religion in some parts of your ancestry. You know, it doesn't have to just be religious, but I'm just saying that for your more recent ones. Mm. The spirit says that you already know all of this information. Uh, maybe you just need a confirmation, but you already know this. Mm, spirit speaks about not missing opportunities as well too don't procrastinate 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go on to pile number three. All right, last but not least, pile number three, let's see what gifts were passed down through your heritage, okay? Um, so, and the gifts can be spiritual and can also be non-spiritual, but I'm focusing on spiritual. So already there's a lot of physical strength with this pile. There's physical strength. Um, there's also, you know, is it morality? Uh, being, have morals, integrity. Your ancestors had a lot of that, okay? So let's see what this has to do with, you know, your gifts. <laughs> Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so this more so relates to heritage. Okay, so what it's saying in your past life, you were a different race. In your past life, you were a different race. I don't get that one often. Maybe part of the reason why you have a lot of morals and integrity and you're very fair is because, you know, in your in your last life, and this deals with your past life, uh, but, you know, your past life or your ancestors too, you know, it's whatever you want to believe. But to me, your past life was your ancestors too. So anyway, uh, in your past life, you know, you may have lived as the opposite race that you are now or just a completely different race that's maybe really, really far out of your ancestry. You might be 2% Asian, right? Well, in that life, when you were Asian, <laughs> you were that ancestor, you had an understanding of that culture. So it's like you are very um, culturally open to receiving information from different places and different things. Like you're not really biased to any side. You more so keep an open mind. And that is a gift, okay? Because some people, you know, they are only within their box, only within their race. And there's not a problem with that either because there might need, there might need to be work done within that race, right? But to me, you know, you being open-minded gives you room and space to grow and to connect to people internationally. So that's just one of the gifts. Like your, your ancestors were probably, you know, nomads. They probably traveled to many different places. So, um, and this is why you would pick up different forms of DNA within you. Uh, so you just have like, you know, outstretched reach to a lot of different things. You're connected to many different things. Interesting. Okay. So another thing that your ancestors was gifted at was music and dancing, okay? they were. It's, it's funny that they put that out there. I don't know why. But they, I guess they wanted to tell you that. They were musicians and dancers. Maybe you have a love for music. And, you know, when I say music, I don't just want people to think, oh, I have to be a great singer to relate to this reading. No, you could just have a powerful love for music and Everybody should, but you know, there are some people more than others. Maybe you could have had a career in music producing certain things or hearing certain things, but some of you, you could have been very well a good singer, rapper, or something like that, poetic. Um, also, dancing. Dancing could be something that's strong with you too. You could have a love for dancing, you could be a dancer, but this was something that they were gifted at. Now, how is this a spiritual gift? Well, if you, you know, if you're really spiritually there, you already know. But, you know, music connects to us in frequencies. It's a part of our voice. You know, uh, the, you know the great creator gave us voice. That was a form of communication, um, and that's a gift in itself. Some people don't look at the small things like gifts, but they are, especially when you can't talk and when you don't have it, when you can't hear, you know? So anyway, you have that gift um, when it comes to music and dancing, and this is something that's passed down through your family. So you may have a lot of people who are musicians and things like that because of that. They can hear certain frequencies. You can pick up on certain things. You know, I love the birds, right? That's a part of my spiritual gift is connected to birds. And what do they do all the time? They sing. And they're singing medicine. Their songs are very healing too. So if you're ever sad one day, um, go out there and listen to a bird sing. Okay? And that song, I'm sure it's going to heal you. Because <laughs> they have medicine in their song. And so, and it's the same thing with humans. Let's see what... This is why you may, you know, go to, I don't know, a dance recital or something like that. You might cry just because you, you connect through that music. You connect through that dance. Mm. So this tells me that they use their music and your ancient ancestor, ancient, excuse me, ancient origin ancestors, they use their music to heal people. Okay? And this is still done today, you know, within tribes, within practices, spiritual practices, we use music to heal. 
Uh, when we sing for the creator, we sing for the deities and things like that. We channel that energy through the drum and all that good stuff. So they use those vibrations to heal. And I've heard so many Native American stories about um, the healing of, I don't know if it was the drum or the flute. I'm not sure. I, I don't forget. But anyway, the point was there was something to where it was like the drum or something was keeping them alive. Um, cause it reminded you of like the heartbeat of the mother, but anyway, that's a whole other story, but I'm just expressing to you that with this shaman card here that tells me that the music and the dance was actually, uh, you know, very, very spiritual. So you have the gift of healing people through music and through song and, and things like that. So you might want to pick you up an instrument if you know how to play one. Pick you up an instrument and learn how to use that instrument to heal people. Mm. But otherly, your ancestors were shamans. Okay, So that means that they were in the bush. They knew how to uh, resonate with that energy. Probably, you know, medicine man, medicine woman. It's kind of similar to the other path I excuse me, the other pal I had, but I see a shaman here. They were also crafters too. Mm. So they used to make a lot of things that could heal people. And this is important too, because this is where you get your, um, your remedies, you get your, um, what, what is it called? Like I, I sell oils and things like that, like money oils and stuff like that. So you have some people who could create medicine with their hands. Mm. And through their craft, I don't just see this as just like spiritual medicine. I'm also seeing this as just being creative in general. Kind of similar to me making my dream catchers. It's art, but it's also spiritual. So it's something about something to do with art. Like, I don't know if you're doing art or if you're creating something, if you're crafting something. But something that is being created is something that's healing people in the same way. Mm. Oh, and speaking of which, I didn't even see that. You have garden. And you also have corn. Mm. So this goes along with that shaman energy. Mm. Okay. So I'm seeing two rings. There's two commitments um, that you have as a person, okay? So this pile and, you know, you have to, you know, ride the wave with wherever it flows for you. But for this pile, I do see um, living a double life. I see living a spiritual life, but also living a mundane life, living one that's not so spiritual. So maybe because I do see fame in this pile. So some of you could get famous uh, from some of the stuff that you're doing, especially with musicians and dancers. That just tells me that, you're somebody that may get noticed. And I don't know if it's going to be for music or dance. It could be for some type of art because I see art in this pile overall. Um, creator. So you could get famous for some of the things that you're naturally gifted at. You're naturally very, very good at. But you have to keep things balanced because I see that your ancestors also kept things balanced. They didn't just do music for just entertainment. They also had, you know, sessions where it was actually healing. So you need to do that as well. Okay. Just like you might sing in the church choir on Sunday, but you know, every other day you sing an R&B or something else like that. Let's get a couple more cards. Mm. Mm, okay. So your ancestors worked, and I don't want to call it dark magic, but let's just say they worked on things that, you know, most people wouldn't touch uh, when it comes to certain things. Because, you know, this root working that I'm seeing deals with like people sending like dark energy to you or um, dark energy to them, so to speak. Because it says someone has tried to cast work, send negative energy your way. I, I feel like they were very good at making talismans and like, you know, enchanting dolls and things like that. They were very good at, you know, what is it called? Object magic or something like that, where they could put something, put a spirit in something and, and it work on its own, uh -huh, whatever. But that's the principle. I'm seeing them being very, very good at enchanting things. Now, also with that, you know, you had a lot of 
people sending things to your ancestors. So they knew how to combat that with some of the stuff that they would make. Um, they knew the poison. They knew the antidote as well, too. Mm -hmm. You're... <laughs> And this is for some of you. Your ancestors dealt with a lot of court case magic. Again, a lot of things to get people out of certain ruts, you know, um, so that some of that hard magic, so to speak. But they also lived a regular life. That's what I see, too. Again, I see both commitments. So I see that some of your ancestors, this could be more of your recent ones. But some of your ancestors lived a regular life, but they also knew how to go in, you know, in the back of the cabinet, you know, out in the fields and do what they needed to do to, you know, get themselves out of certain situations. They could also bring money and luck to them as well, too. Very good magicians. OK, um, but like I said, I also see a lot of fame following some of your family members. And this is also going to pass down to you if you will allow it if you will allow it in your life, but you're going to have to know how to do some protection magic and you're not going to have to learn how to do that. Okay. Um, hmm. And I don't know why you have this coming up. I always have to say that you have an ancestor with a birthday coming up or the day they pass and they're sending love and light to you and they wish that you send them the same. All right. It's because it says poor libations for me. You still have some unknown ancestors. So they want you to learn more about your heritage um, so that you can identify some things about yourself. Mm. Let's pull one more card and we're going to close out this reading. This reading was pretty long, longer than I expected. Any more information about spiritual gifts? Hmm. There are some deities that your ancestors had associations with. Okay. Um, I'm saying, of course, the connection, strong connection to the creator, God, things like that. I see a strong connection to that. Um, they dedicated at least an hour of power. So that's what you need to be doing. They dedicated some time and set some time aside, aside for their spirituality. They kept that strong along with using their energy for other things too. Um, what was I going to say? I think I forgot it. Mm. That's what it was. Allies and support. That's why I threw another card. I'm like, what was I trying to say spirit? And they, they told me again, allies and support. Yeah. You have, um, some some strong spirit guides i don't know if these are you know they're probably of course everything is of earth uh you know nature spirits or something like that but you have some strong spirits that your ancestors used to work with that would help them um with some of their things that they need to do whether these are water spirits forest spirits it's something to do with that they have some strong connection to certain deities that they used to work with and venerate um, some of your ancestors and um, these these same beings, I don't want to say they're being passed down to you, but they are still within your family line so that you can basically you can access them and you can use their assistance because they watch over the entire family. Um, you'll know more about that in your personal, you know, whatever your individual story is. All right, guys. So that is it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this reading. Like and subscribe and peace.